house where they're, you know, partying, harding, and that's that's unfair, you know, whatever. Yeah. So the people want to, you know, quiet. They want to be quiet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there were a couple. There were a couple on last night. Well, at least one that I, I, I didn't stay on for the whole meeting, but one that I heard was actually Rob Kinerny. You remember him, Lee? He was on the on MEDAC a while back. I uh, would like to see a picture. I'm terrible with names, but yeah. faces. He, he lives down uh, Renfrew Park, down by the beach. Oh, okay, yes. And uh, so he was on, you know, sort of uh, talking about the experience he had with a short-term rental that was next door to him. And it sounds like it was a nightmare. Mm. Oh, it can be. Yeah, down in my area, you know, Eastern Point, I'm on, you know, Purgatory, as you know, it's uh, even on Crest Street, a lot of um, noise. Yep. Yeah. And that's what happens. Hi, Barbara. Hi there. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. How are you? Oh, very frustrated. I've been having Zoom problems for the last yesterday and today. Uh, my my other computer would not um, go do the video last night at the town council meeting, so I had to come over to this one, and it's still not working. And this one, I'm oh god, Meg, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> we all know, you made right? It. You made it. We even have David on video tonight, so everyone yeah. everyone's getting there. I know that's new. Yes. Yeah, my, my my first time I usually call in, but I said, well, got some technical uh, tech tech help, and now I'm here. Good. Right. Well, I I don't know what's wrong with my other computer because it you know I've, I've I've been using that one all along with the zooms, but the video would not come up last night. So I don't, and I've been working with it on and off all day, trying to figure out what's wrong. And I don't know, it's very frustrating. I hate technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, but you're here with us now, that's all that counts. That's yes, it. Yes, it is, yes, and thank you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, when I have problems, it's the husband or the son. Oh. So uh, I've got John on the line. He's trying to get the uh, Zoom link. And I sent him the agenda, but it hasn't made it through yet. So he should be joining us shortly. Yeah, the link's right on the agenda. Yep. Yeah. This is my third Zoom today. <laughs> oh, Better than traveling, though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm beginning to like the Zoom just for the convenience. Yes. Yes, I, I agree. I mean, I, like I said, I had I had two others already today. And, and, you know, if we had to, yes. So I'm going to do my first national convention on Zoom. Oh, and I want to see how that is going to work out. Yeah, oh. well, you won't show up, but you'll see everybody else. Yes. Well, <laughs> I think that right. What I'll do is um, just make sure that I'm on my desktop because yeah. there's three monitors, so I could have three of them just oh, going on, yeah. and they can't see me because I don't have a camera on that. And it's great because you can hear what's going on, do other things. Yeah. And then come back if I have to vote or whatever I have to do, and then listen to the lectures. Well, at least you're getting to go. That's important. Yes. Because it looks like our um, uh, national meeting in August in Chicago, they have it in person. Oh, well, yeah. cross your fingers. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Have you gotten your vaccine yet? I have my second shot due on Monday. Oh, okay, good. How about you? Uh, my second shot on uh, Wednesday, St. Patrick's Okay, Day. we're right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did it at CVS, it went very well. How about you? Um, I went to 
Newport Hospital. They called me back um, at 9.30. Uh -huh. I had the appointment at 11.30. Uh -huh. And I was done at 12. Yeah. And I had a state school board meeting. And there were people, two of them, waited in line for three hours oh my God. at the wow. convention center. Oh my God. And the other one was almost four hours at the one in Cranston. Wow. Oh, no. And we're lucky here. <laughs> yes, in we downtown. are. Brian, can you hear me? We can hear you, Bob. How are you doing? Okay, hanging in there. How is everyone? Good. Oh, Very good, Bob. Hi. Good, good. Now, how are you doing? Uh, I've had my, my days, good and bad. <laughs> Today's not a good one, but I'm healing. And uh, I'm finally out of that god-awful collar around my neck. I've worn that for three months. Uh, and uh, my head, I feel like a bobble doll with my head <laughs> bobbling all over the place. But uh, I'll get stronger with my neck muscles very shortly. And I'm into some... Uh, different kind of physical therapy. So we'll see. Yeah. But thanks for asking. Thanks well, for you asking. Good. Yeah. Thanks. You know, uh, in my kitchen, as, as they say, la cucina. <laughs> yeah. uh, I understand uh, uh, Ron sent me an email that David Dittman uh, apologizes talking about vaccine shots. Uh, he's presently up in Providence at the, at the convention center, I guess, trying to get his shot. It's yeah. going to be around five o'clock. So he's, he's not going to be able to make his, his meeting, but I guess Ron has yeah. been in touch with David kind of trying to bring him up to state, uh, up okay. to status as to where we are. And uh, I'm sure right. he'll be with us the next time. Yep. So How are we doing for a quorum, Ron? I, we've got a quorum and the only folks that are missing are Terry Flynn and Aaron. So if you want to get started. I think yeah. we can. And if they show up, I'll let them in. Okay. Tom, uh, Tom was with us. Yep. Yes. Ah, and I see John. Yes. Yeah. I'm on mute because I have barking dogs here. So I'll stay on mute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom. <laughs> well, Thank that's you. very good of you because I've been to a lot of Zooms where they let the noise happen and that's not, I don't think they yeah. realize it's in the background, but it happens. All right. Yep. And I see John Bagwell is uh, with us as well. Yep. Okay, Lee and David. Yes. So uh, sure. why don't we open up the meeting and um, address the first issue, uh, the approval of the minutes of the February 10th uh, regular MEDAC meeting and special meeting of February 22nd, 2021. Uh, <clears throat> any concerns with those minutes? No. Oh, then Chair will entertain a motion to uh, receive and accept the minutes as provided. So moved. Thank Second. You. Second. All those in Second. favor, please signify aye. Aye by saying aye. 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 It passes uh, unanimously. Uh, Ron, how about an update on regional and state responses to COVID-19 businesses business impacts? So there's not, at least from my end of things, not a whole lot to report. There's, there hasn't, haven't been any new programs introduced uh, for the local, um, local administration um, recently. Uh, we still have the CDBG micro enterprise program still running, but that, that has seen very little um, interest from the business community. And that's primarily due to the restrictions that apply to CDBG and that's community development block grant funding um, the biggest hurdle, I think, is income restrictions. Um, folks, the business owners would have to be low or moderate income per their most recent federal tax return in order to qualify for that funding. So I think that has had a lot to do with the lack of interest in that program. Um, and as we've uh, talked about before, the Take It Outside program that uh, went through the end of last year, uh, that's wrapped up and I haven't heard of any um, additional funding as of yet that might change you know perhaps now with the new federal stimulus package that's about to come out um, maybe there will be some additional funding for local um, for small businesses that might come through the municipalities but um, as of now that's all I have um, 
and then you know, I was hoping Aaron would be here to be able to talk about what's going on regionally or, or at the state level. She has her finger on the pulse much more than I do. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. going on at that level. So uh, did she indicate she won't be with us? I didn't hear from her. So she maybe may, she'll she pop may in. Yeah. yeah. Now, there was a, another young lady that recently was given a position at the uh, at the chamber. Uh, that might be conversant with some of these uh, programs that are out there. I forget her name, but uh, did we invite her uh, to uh, this meeting? She's got, I guess I, I'd say a standing invitation. Her name is Sarah Burke. And um, oh, yeah. I know that she wanted to be involved and she did come to the special meeting. We had to talk about mm -hmm. educational um, or career training, That's I should nice. say career right. education. Yep. Okay. Um, so I, I would expect that she'll, um, pop in when she can. John's waving his finger. John, you're muted. Am I unmuted now? You're good. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that she should be on the next uh, list that you send out for open dates. You want know, to get for the next meeting involving uh, the Newport career. I mean, involving uh, Colleen Germain. Uh, I spoke to Co when I spoke to Colleen. I asked if she had. I met Sarah or she said, no, she's still trying to, she's talked to her, but she'd like to find out more about what she does. And that might be an opportunity for the two of them to exchange some thoughts sure. at this meeting, at, at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else from anyone on this subject or any questions? Otherwise, we'll proceed to the update uh, on the town council's consideration of potential amendments to short-term rental ordinance. I have to uh, apologize. I've, I've sat in on all of the uh, council meetings, except last night's. I was not up to it uh, and had other, other requirements and responsibilities, so I missed it. But uh, I, I, uh, I touched space with uh, John. Bagwell this morning said it was a three-hour meeting and not anything was resolved, but uh, there was a lot of discussion. A lot of people had an interest. Um, now Barbara, you, you were there at the entire meeting. Three cheers for you. Um, do you want to uh, bring it, give us an update or uh, pardon me? Sure. Oh, go ahead. Well, the update is that there really isn't any update. The, the, it was, a, I thought, a very good meeting, lengthy, um, very good meeting. Um, people expressed their concerns. The, um, what was interesting was that the tone was very nice. It was very, very compatible. Um, Bob, at the very beginning of the meeting, um, offered a, a, some alternatives, which um, I thought were well received overall, um, rather than the $500 per room thing that had been originally proposed. Um, that of course was not a motion, it was just informational, and, but it did set the tone for the rest of the meeting. And, and I was particularly pleased that, that it did set that tone because a lot of people, I, I, I've lost count, of people that actually said they appreciated the tone of the meeting and how it was going. And it was, it was information sharing more than anything else. Um, by the end of the meeting, um, there were some decisions made. Um, the fact that nothing really could be done this year because everything was kind of already in place. Um, people were already renting rooms to, to, to clients and um, there, was, there was no way that anything would happen you know, very quickly. Um, but that was good in a way because what it did was it, it created a, um, a target, if you will, of a later time for next year to have everything straightened out by, by this time next year. So that gives us breathing room. And um, what was decided was that um, probably there would be a motion on the April um, uh, agenda for um, a task force that would look into things and, and um, a timeline would be developed and that sort of thing. And they sort of dumped that responsibility on me, which, you know- I made a mistake of looking away, Barbara. I've done that myself. 
<laughs> you, exactly what happened. <laughs> your, your attention drifted for 10 seconds. I could see that, but that gave them an opportunity to name. Yeah, so. and they did. I mean, it, it was the very end of the meeting. And I said, well, what you really have to do is you have to develop what amounts to a strategic plan. I didn't use those words, but yeah. that's what it was. You had to develop a plan for how you would think it would, you know, what, what would happen down the line. And they said, okay, you do it. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm in, in process. Okay. I'm, I'm may I just add, Robert, may I just add a couple of things? Yeah, go ahead, John. As Barbara knows, I've been a uh, source of many emails on a lot of subjects over, on this particular thing. Uh, and I agree with you, Barbara, that the there was a decision not to make any change that would affect the relationship between the STR owners and their clients or possible clients. However, there are a few things that the council could address that wouldn't affect that. And I will uh, quote, send a memo, and I'll, to, for the record, I'll tell you what some things that came to mind. First of all, I think there was a a view stated by some people, there are a heck of a lot more STRs in town that yes. are operated than are registered. That's correct. And, we know and that. the council needs to set up a carrot and a stick plan to get those people in. You yeah. know, like if you're if you have an unregistered gun, you got a, you got a month to get it registered, and if you do in that month, you know, uh, all is forgiven. But if you don't. Uh, you're in trouble. And I think that's the, our, the council's goal should be to a plan that would do that. Secondly, um, I'm, I came up with some suggestions on the impact that these uh, uh, short-term rentals have on property values. I've talked to George Durgan and he said he would take into account the impact that, you know, somebody comes in and pays a million bucks for a, a property that maybe was market listed at 800,000. Cause they, he said, if he, if he knows about these, they won't be used in the comps. I mean, that's what he said. And since the assessor has an awful lot of uh, uh, opportunity to do those things, uh, that's, that's good news. However, uh, I have talked to a couple of people who said that when they buy a house here, they're kind of, they want to be sure that there's no short-term rental right nearby. They're, they don't want to buy. And I think the council could at least consider the possibility of making that, uh, that, that information something that's required. I mean, you know, if you, you've got lead paint, you got to report that because that's a state rule. The town could say, you know, when you go to put your house in the market, if there is a, a short-term rental with an X number of, feet or adjacent to your property, you're required to, to reveal that, that's all. And I think that won't affect the relationships with any of the clients. Uh, another thing, and I think the council's talked about this, is have a list of all the STRs that are registered. I've seen the list, it's impossible to go through. But if you had that listed by a street, uh, somebody could say, gee, there's an, S there's an STR at X number, Tuckerman Avenue. I don't see that on the list. So it would be kind of a, a, a community watch thing. It would also permit people to take a look at when they're, you know, brokers to take a look to see if they're, um, if there's a, a short term rental nearby. And those are, uh, so I think there are a number of things that the council can move on that won't affect this year, that won't affect the relationship between the uh, uh, between the uh, STR owners and the uh, and the uh, and their clients, and I think the first thing that this group should take on is how to identify the uh, people that have not registered because that hurts them as much as anybody else. People are getting away with something, and uh, and I think that's that would be a challenge for this task force that's coming on board to have them figure that out sooner than later. So. Uh, I'll put these in writing, but I think there are a few things the council can do that won't affect the relationships between the uh, the uh, S SDR owners and their clients. So anyway. Barbara, did, did you say that the task force will be established uh, uh, in the, at the, the next town council meeting? Well, no, no. I said there would, be, there would be a motion that would be on the April agenda. That's what Bob said, the April agenda. There will be a motion to put it together. 
um, and and it will deal with it. I just the three words we 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 identified really the three things that are most important as far as we're concerned, um, and that's registration, regulation, and enforcement. So we need to look at those three things. But um, no, it's it's some. Um, one of the things that became pretty clear is that you just don't jump in and do something, um, you know, quick and uh, it's not a quick and dirty resolvable thing. It's it's um, it takes time and you have to think about people's feelings and the impact on them. And and, um, and listen, it's a town of 16,000 people. It's not a town of 400 people. It's a, a town of 16,000. So that's what we have to be cautious about mm. and not make any mistakes. Okay. And uh, how about the concept of uh, hiring uh, another individual at the zoning office uh, to be primarily responsible for short-term rentals and working with the uh, we police? Talked, we talked about that. It, had, it was um, originally proposed to be a, a full-time position. And I, I, the talk at this point is, is uh, probably a seasonal type of thing rather than a, a full-year position. Okay. But that, Thank like you. That, I'm just giving you conversation. I'm not giving you decisions. Right, right. I see Terry is with us now. Welcome. Hello, Terry. Thank you. Hi, I apologize Terry. for being tardy. Not a problem. Not a problem. Hey, John. I, meant, I mentioned earlier, uh, just for your information, that Dave Dittman expressed regrets that he's up in Providence getting his uh, vaccine shot and he's not going to be with us. So I'm sure that's a little bit more important than me making his first meeting, but uh, we'll, we'll be with him uh, uh, going forward. Okay, any, any discussion further on uh, the issue of uh, uh, update on potential amendments to the short-term rental ordinance? Hey, John, on the short-term uh, rentals, what's, what would you say is a, a guesstimate of the people that are not registered? Do you have any kind of feel for that yeah, at all? Well, let me tell you. Um, two weeks ago, the count was 186 from the town. Uh, the most recent report uh, that Bob Sylvia was referring to and that the uh, town came up with, what was it, uh, Barbara, 143 or something? Oh, yeah, but that, we know that that's not right. Okay. And then there's, there is a national group that I found. Well, we'll put a little background. There's a national group called uh, AIR DNA. And it's a group that uh, if you're interested in becoming an STR owner, operator, uh, especially if you want to buy more than one becoming an investor. This is the group to go to. And uh, you may recall that two years ago, the young lady that was working for the Chamber of Commerce did a special study on uh, Airbnbs using the information from that group. And they found close to 400 in 2019 in Middletown, both of them concentrated at Easton's Point. Uh, I checked in with that group just recently on their list, and their map shows uh, 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 over 250. So, uh, how many? And there was a comment last night by uh, one of the individuals who had checked with a couple of these sources, and it was between uh, was well over 200 and some into 300. So, um, I, again, I think that is something that this group can work on. Uh, uh, Barbara, I really do. Is that they are they are probably in a better position to figure out who's unregistered than anybody else because that's they it hurts them every time people come on that are unregistered that hurts them, and uh, I think that would validate very quickly the value of this task force. Is that will mean more income for the town, and I think that people will register if the penalties for not registering are big enough. But it could be scores. Let's put it that way. If I had an estimate, I'd say probably 100 Airbnbs are, that are short-term rentals that are out there that we don't know about. Okay. Thank you, John. Any other questions? David, is that uh, responsive? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, move, moving on, uh, the next item of business is uh, the update on the, the discussion uh, Opportunities to enhance Middletown High School student access to trade technical based education. And uh, uh, we did have a meeting with uh, Rosemary um, Krager on that. And, I'm, and I think she sent back some documentation or memoranda 
uh, on what was said and what was uh, identified. But Ron, why don't you uh, take up that uh, matter? I'm going to turn it right over to John Bagwell because he's uh, <laughs> he's got the he's you got the latest my mute button soon or or Tom you know we set up at the last meeting at that special meeting we we set up a little bit of a subcommittee with Tom John and Lee right. so whoever whoever wants to take the lead go right ahead I will please yeah. proceed <laughs> yeah I'm the one who sent the emails out Tom turned to me after the meeting and he said John why don't you put together kind of a mission statement for what this is all about and um, uh, operating under, I guess I do better work, but it's better not, but I get things done when I'm under pressure. And I put together a statement today, which I, uh, Tom has looked at, which includes some background, but uh, probably it's a draft form. But the mission of the uh, group is uh, to quote, understand the trade focused career pathways and educational opportunities offered by Newport's Trade and Career Center, other area schools, as well as, and I think you gave me some other outfit, Tom, and, and, encourage, and encourage the wider promotion of these options at Middletown High School. Uh, that basically is what we're trying to do. And uh, I uh, spoke to Colleen Germain uh, earlier in the week, and uh, I sent to Ron some of the dates, several dates that she would be available and uh, she's looking forward to bringing her people from the Career Center and meeting with us and uh, describing the programs. And it uh, would be great to have Rosemary there. So I guess, as I said to uh, Ron, it's a bit like herding cats. Uh -huh. to get everybody together. But that Ron does a good job of that. But at least we have some dates, about six dates, when uh, Colleen's available. So anyway. That would be a special uh, meeting of the MEDAC group, or would yes, we do yes. it on our regularly scheduled meeting? Probably is. Well, that's up to uh, up to you, Bob, and to uh, Ron. But, uh, but my, Bob, well, my is suggestion is a special meeting. Yeah. It's a special meeting because if you try to constrain it to the second yeah. Wednesday in the month, then you end up with uh, some people not being able to make that time. Yeah, good point. I like John's good approach point. over hers dates that the Colleen's available, there are several of them. Let's pick one of those and let's do it. I okay. Can, I can send out a doodle poll to all of all the MEDAC members as well as others, uh, like we've talked about Sarah Burke and Rosemary and anybody else uh, who you wish to, to send that out to. I'll do that tomorrow and um, we'll pick a date of, the, you know, from the list that, uh, that uh, Colleen gave us. Great. <laughs> Okay. I've just okay. I just lost Zoom. Can you hear me? I just lost. Yep. We, Zoom. We, yeah. we, we can, still we can have hear. You. Yeah, we can well, see you I can. I'm going to start over again because suddenly I go. Oh, there you are. Yeah. I got some ad advertisement that flipped in here, so there we are. Oh. Well, it sounded like somebody started. Okay. Uh, anything else on this issue, Ron? You'll proceed with the so-called doodle poll. I'll I'll All do right. that. Good. Yep. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, next, we uh, we should be looking at an update on the West Main Connington redevelopment effort and where we are with that. Anything new, Ron? So what's happening is on Monday night on the regular council docket is the receipt of the response to the request for information, the RFI. Um, the council will receive, uh, it, it, and it was from the Landings Development Group, Chris Bisho, um, that submitted that response to the RFI. I believe he'll be on uh, for that meeting to talk about his ideas. And then the council will have to determine how it wishes to proceed um, going forward, whether it's, uh, you know, there's been discussion about possibly reissuing the RFI due to the limited response, or if, the council feels that it has enough information at this point to, to make some decisions on how to proceed with the use of that property, then they can certainly do that as well. So I think it just, it's gonna be a, a conversation that the council is gonna have to have, but at least uh, they'll get a presentation from Chris B. Show about his ideas. And that's, uh, that's Monday night, the 15th. Monday the 15th, okay. Right. Have to... Uh log in on that so we can see what's happening. Okay. Uh, any uh, any further questions? Uh, was there any uh, definition of what Chris was looking for? 
uh, to do or suggest the I can, protocol? Yeah, I can send it out. I, I may have done it before, but if not, I can certainly send out what he submitted. It's in the docket too, so you can get it online if you wanted to look at it. Okay. He, he submitted a nice package of what his ideas are um, for the use of the property. Uh, you know, essentially a mix of uses, residential, commercial, and I think he had some, maybe some office space in there and then also municipal space. So um, not too far off from the ideas that had been floated prior to that, um, you know, going back several years with the conceptual work that was done. And um, yeah, I think he's in line with what had been talked about back then. Okay, well, we should check in on the 15th and uh, see what, what the council does, all right? Question? Uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Ron, will you be at that meeting on the 15th at the yeah. council meeting? Yes. Thank yep. you. Well, I'll be I'll be on Zoom, but yes, I'll be I'll be attend I'll be attending the meeting via Zoom. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else, Terry? You all set? They they developed the abutting area. Is that correct, Ron? Chris Bisho, his group owns the former. Um, what was it called? <clears throat> Navy the Naval God. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's called the landings now. I'm trying to, I can't remember what, whether what it was called before that, but in any event, it, it was multifamily housing that was former Navy housing in the back on Coddington there. Mm -hmm. um, he's got, I, I don't know, probably several hundred units of housing there. So he directly abuts the subject property. Yep. And that's certainly one of the reasons that he has a, an interest in what happens there and, and probably sure. um, would like to be involved. Yep. It's a natural extension of his holdings, actually. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Very yeah. good. Um, going on to uh, the update of the Atlantic Beach mm -hmm. Overlay Zoning District. Frozen or what? Still there, John. Oh, oh, your shit. face, John, your face is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you, John. So if you just want to keep going, that's fine. Um, so the Atlantic Beach Overlay District, the I believe I believe this is on the docket as well for Monday. I might be wrong, but the council will be advertising for public hearing of that of that proposal that's uh, being promoted by the by the uh, planning board. And uh, I looked at the docket today. Terry might be able to if you, if you can confirm that it's on the docket for the fifteenth. I'm not sure, um, but I know it'll be if if not on the fifteenth, it'll be coming up soon to be ordered advertised. So once okay. that happens, you know, when, once it's advertised and we know what meeting date it's on, I can certainly let, let everybody know that when that hearing is gonna be and would certainly encourage uh, folks from MEDAC and business owners, property owners from that area of town that they um, tune in to that, to that hearing and participate. Okay, any further questions on that? Um, going forward, a potential undergrounding of utility Terry, in the Terry. ABC district. Terry, Terry has her hand, Terry has her hand up. Up. I, I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I was waving frantically because like John, I think I had an overlay of screens and I could not find the, the talk button. Uh, um, the only thing I see uh, on the agenda, I just did a quick search for Atlantic is the undergrounding, Ron. Oh, okay. This is under ABD, which I'm not finding in the search. So I don't see with those two searches of the word Atlantic or ABD, I'll try overlay. Well, if it's not on for the 15th, it'll be coming soon. Okay, yeah. So it's so just the uh, the uh, undergrounding of the utilities is yep. there. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. You're welcome. <laughs> I um, still can't find you anymore. <laughs> there you are. Technology. Yeah, technology. Love to hate it. Yep. Yeah, I hate it and I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Boy, I tell you. It's a, it's a whole new world. Uh, it's a good stretch. It's all a stretch for us. It is. It is. Okay. Well, uh, if there's no further discussion on that, uh, how about um, um, anything that's on anyone's mind that we might want to discuss before a journey? Well, the, other, the next item on the agenda is that utilities discussion. So Terry did find that that's on the docket. For Monday night. So yep. 
Um, I submitted okay. a memo to Sean with the latest information based on what we received from National Grid and, and with help from BHB calculated or recalculated the costs for the, um, for the project should it, should it proceed. So that will be on for discussion and that's another item where the, the town council will have to decide what it wishes to do. Um, you know, the costs, once we did get that additional information from National Grid uh, and we're able to do better cost estimates, the, the cost has ballooned, you know, far beyond what the initial estimates were and, and far beyond what, what identified funding we might have from the TIF, the Tax Increment Financing District. So the, um, the discussion will will start with a, a review of those estimated costs and and see what the council wishes to do. Ron, um, did the v, VHB give us any indication of why the exponential uh, increase in the estimated cost uh, is forthcoming from National Grid? It's it, well, it's based on the requirements, National Grid's design requirements. So um, the initial estimates were based. Uh, really loosely on an, another project that they had completed. But once we got more detailed information from National Grid on what the project entailed, that's, that's why the costs went up so much. Um, John has previously discussed and, and suggested that the town engage uh, Jim Farrar to review that work. And, and I guess I would suggest that if, if uh, that's something that's um, still of interest that that can be raised with the town council on Monday night. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, can Go you ahead, hear John. me because I, I lost connection to the meeting. Am I muted? Nope, you're good. No. Okay, you're anyway, good. I, I really feel strongly that we need him to look at these because there's the option of going behind the buildings is an option that I have talked to other people and they said, well, that's what they do. They don't go down a main street. They go down, you know, because of disruption and everything else. And I think Jim Carrar could say, what you see is what you get. You know, that's it. Or he might say it's worth looking into. Yeah. And if uh, the, and just, there is, there are funds in the, uh, <clears throat> whatever we call it, that we set aside. And, um, <laughs> um, so there's the money available on that. Was TIF the funds, yeah. In the TIF funds. Yeah. Their money available. Have you have you had a chance to talk to Jim uh, Bob? Jim uh, I have not recently. I did a while back, and he was amenable to doing uh, making himself available. Now I just don't know how the committee would want uh, to proceed with that. Uh, do we just have uh, uh, Ron uh, connect with uh, Jim and uh, uh, talk to him, or do we want to invite? Uh, Jim to uh, uh, our one of our next meetings and have him prepped at least as best as we can as to what the project is all about and where we are at the moment and give him whatever information uh, Ron has as to VHB's estimates and National Grid's estimates. Uh, have him take a look at that and then share some thoughts with us. I have no idea what he would say and whether or not he could even uh, give us some comfort and encouragement that the project is doable. Well, he knows more about than anybody else, considering the fact that he was the supervisor. And the, uh, he led the project down Tuckerman Avenue, which is clearly a lot less complicated, but he's been there I mean, and done that. Indi with Indian yeah. Avenue. Indian right. Avenue. Sorry, yeah. Indian yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think that project is well underway. Uh, yeah. And Unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever the case may be, uh, that project did not really require municipal monies. It was all privately funded by right. people who had a significant interest in seeing that it be completed. Well, if the committee wants me to reach out to, uh, to Jim, I'd be more than happy to do that and work with Ron Wolanski in, in setting up a mutually convenient time for him to uh, make himself available. Question? Go right ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, would this be on a volunteer basis or is the proposal to hire and pay Jim for the, his opinion? That's my first question. My second question is, do we know if the requirements of National Grid for these, these undergrounding um, the lines 
allows them to go behind the buildings or to have options? That's a know. question that's, I don't know. The that's something for Jim to Farrar to yeah. find out. I mean, that's the, I think the other thing is, uh, I don't think we're asking him to volunteer. I mean, this is a big deal. You get what you pay for. We, we need professional. Uh, he's the man with probably knows more about undergrounding and working with National Grid than anybody else because of the work on Indian Avenue. And we have money in the TIF fund. I mean, it might be 50 to 60,000. And there's money there. You don't. Well, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, uh, John. I'm, I'm thinking out loud that the meeting that I'm going to try to set up, uh, the contact with Jim and, and Ron and whatnot, that's not. That's going to be on a volunteer basis. If oh, he that's volunteer. No, yeah. No, I yeah. That's volunteer. Yeah. yeah. But I think that uh, that's key. I mean, between now and Monday, there's going to be a council meeting on Monday, and the council, I think, needs to be hopefully uh, advised that uh, Jim Farrar will meet with us, and we like we'd like any final decision postponed. Now, who? Well, I can reach out. Uh, uh, tomorrow for sure uh, and see if uh, Jim <clears throat> is interested in in uh, proceeding on a, <clears throat> an initial basis as we've just described. <clears throat> I think he will and uh, I can have um, Ron or myself uh, send on to the council uh, any information on that. Is, is the uh, item did we say, is that on the docket for the 15th? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So I could call in uh, and share with the town council what, uh, what, what Jim is doing. Yeah, he, he's very responsive to me. I've been working with him now for the last two years privately uh, on the um, uh, renovation and the upgrade of the YMCA project. He's the project manager. So I, I have... Uh, to be in contact with them quite frequently. I just haven't raised this issue or this subject matter with him, but I'll be glad to do it tomorrow. And to Terry's second question, I can, I guess, add a little bit to that. When we went back to National Grid and asked for that additional information that we ended up receiving, one of the questions was to have them consider looking at putting the lines in back of the buildings, um, as John had suggested. And their response to that inquiry was that the design that they are considering um, and the design that they've con conceptually completed was the least um, expensive option. So their, their opinion was that going behind the buildings um, was not going to save money. Hmm. Well, I, I, but, I, but that doesn't I'm not, hurt. I'm not, disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing with you, Ron, but I read a response from them and they said the cost of wiring is the same whether you go down behind the building or down the street. And I'm, we're not talking about just the cost of, of course it is, the cost of wiring. It's just basically the same distance. What we're talking about is the total impact. Uh, I have no idea. I mean, I'm not questioning what they're saying. I just think we need another set of eyes to look at it. I mean, I'm sure he'll come to the meeting. Jim will prepare and he might say, I've given an overview quickly and I don't, I'm don't. i going to save you some money because there's nothing I can add. Or he might say, uh, a, good, a good issue to look at. At this point, we don't know. Yeah, he's had uh, experience dealing with people at the national grid level, both in the design phase and other phase. Uh, and he's conversing with who the quote unquote players are at this point in time. So I think he cut through a lot of... Uh, uh, red tape and, and get the answers for us. Whether the answers are going to be what we want, uh, I don't know. I, I just feel that th this project uh, is feasible in concept, but I don't know from a financial perspective whether or not the, the town uh, of Middletown and the council would want to get continue with it if it's uh, a number that's absolutely outrageous uh, and un unsustainable. But that's yet to be determined. That's not our decision. We're only advisory in, in all of this to the council. Okay. Data collectors, data collectors at this point. <laughs> yeah. And you do a good job with that, John. <laughs> I give you that. Yes, Terry. So if that was that if that project 
fell by the wayside because of the the current costs. I'm sure, you know, in 10 years, technology will be different and maybe it'll be more feasible. But what happens to the TIF money that's been collected? Is that for, I think the streetscapes is a separate whole tip, right? So that it doesn't involve the TIF or do I have this wrong? Well, it could. Um, that The funding that we're generating from the TIF, T-I-F, is available for improvements of any type, any public improvements within the district. Mm -hmm. So we had through through the um, effort to create the TIF focused mm -hmm. on the undergrounding utilities and use that as our potential project and calculating, um, using to calculate the funds we, we, that we could collect and, and what project we might spend it on. But the way the TIF is worded it, it would be that funding would be available for any public improvements within the district. So that could be sidewalks. Um, you know, if we end up getting that streetscapes project into the state tip, the transportation improvement program, but maybe not at the full amount, then we could supplement what we get from the state with TIF money. Yeah. Yeah. The, the monies on the TIF are uh, directly restricted to the, uh, uh, Atlantic Beach uh, district and right. improvements. Correct. So uh, we we might be able to improve everything road wise and streetscape wise, uh, but not put the wires underground, which is not the the, the goal of uh, of the project. But at least it will have a significant upgrade, I would think, of the district itself. Yep. Which is badly needed. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's uh, the wheels of government turn, in my experience, very slowly, very slow. but they grind finely. You know, we when when something is done, it's done. But uh, uh, this has been a subject matter for Meat Act for a while, and I get a little frustrated at uh, the degree to which we can move things forward. But again, we're advisory and advisory only. Yep. So. Uh, the next meeting is we, April 14th. Do we have one more issue on the docket? Yeah, there's one more agenda item, which we pretty much just touched on, which is the Streetscapes project. And as I've talked about um, basically every meeting for the past several months, the decision on that depends on the decision of the undergrounding. Um, once the undergrounding decision is made one way or the other, then we can proceed with the design yeah. of the Streetscapes project. Also, oh, Quidnick Avenue affects Purgatory Road, you're saying. I, I thought they were separate. Purgatory Road, the sidewalk is a separate item. So that will that is proceeding. We're in design right now with the engineer. Um, we do have tip, tip money, transportation improvement program money from the state, $640,000. Um, the town council received a presentation, uh, I forget when that was, a few, few meetings ago. Um, where this discussion was that there would be identified additional funding from the town to make up the difference. The project's going to be in, end up being uh, somewhere in the range of a, a million to million two hundred thousand um, dollars. And the finance director, town administrator, uh, identified some funding that could help uh, supplement the, the TIP funding. So that project is proceeding. Um, the goal uh, is to get it completed, the design completed, get it approved by RIDOT and get the project bid for construction um, by the fall. Um, not, not that construction is going to necessarily start in the fall, but that's, that's the goal is to get everything in place. Um, if it happens sooner than, than expected, construction might start in the fall, but I, I would suggest it's probably more likely it would be in the spring. spring of Are we talking about the sidewalks? Sidewalk on purgatory, right? Yeah. Why is the how is the TIF money available for that? Tip. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. The acronyms are very close. TIF. TIF. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ron, re refresh my recollection on the purgatory sidewalk program. Does that include <clears throat> upgrades for um, uh, surface water drainage and street drainage? Or is it just sidewalks? They, there may have to be some modification to the drainage to accommodate the sidewalk. Um, I think the, the goal is to limit the amount of, of drainage work that will be done just uh, for funding purposes. Uh, but there may be 
uh, some need Where to from? reroute the yeah. reroute the drainage in, in specific areas. Okay, um, and I think that uh, talks about the those three items on eight streetscapes, Purgatory Road, and ABC District. Yep. Now, is there anything that uh, uh, the committee wants to talk about ad hoc uh, before we uh, we adjourn? For the good of the order, as they usually say. <laughs> well, that's comforting to know that uh, there aren't any loose ends for this meeting at this point. Uh, so uh, unless there's no something talk either. Up, but what's that, John? And, and no loose talk. <laughs> well, uh, with that said, let's uh, schedule the next meeting on April 14th. Uh, and uh, we should uh, be aware of the March uh, 15th Middletown Town Council meeting and see if we can uh, access that as well and stay on top of things. And I'll, I'll reach out tomorrow to Jim Farrar and get back to Ron and he can communicate the results of that to the membership. Okay? Very good. Sounds All good. right. Thank you very much. Stay safe, uh, everybody. everybody. Thanks, folks.